Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are going to be creating the Jump Shop GUI. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox moment content. Of course, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Before we hop into studio, we're going to want to grab some free assets from my Patreon. Now, if you guys have watched the previous episode, you guys have probably gone to this page before, downloaded the GUI assets, and used them in your own game. It's Seems like every couple of episodes we're adding more and more assets to this so you're going to want to re-download the asset pack once again so you have the new assets then you're going to want to hop into roblox studio go to the asset manager and upload them now once you've uploaded those into your game you should be go with that and you can then close the asset manager now that we have those assets uploaded we can actually start working on creating the gui so we're going to go inside of the star gui add a brand new screen gui and we're going to rename the screen gui to jump shop just like that for the properties we will of course want to make sure that we set reset on spawn to false then what we're going to want to do is add a frame inside of the screen GUI and we want to resize this for the X scaled we're going to try a 0.3 and then for the Y scale we're going to try 0.5 and that looks pretty nice now we want to center this so we're going to go to the anchor point and set that to 0.5 and for the position both the X and the Y scale 0.5 as well and now we have that centered the next thing that we're going to want to do is change the background color of this we actually want to have a nice little purple just like that and we're also going to want to add in a UI corner to this as well so that we can round this corner as a tiny bit now for the corner radius we're going to try this at like 0.05 comma zero and I think that actually looks pretty good you of course can adjust this however you want maybe even 0.02 looks pretty good so we'll probably leave it as that next what we're going to do just to save some time we're actually going to go inside of the reverse and then just grab this text label called title that we've made previously and then we're going to paste that directly inside of the frame the reason we're doing that is because it already has a ton of the properties that we normally use anyway so it's going to save us a little bit of time doing this instead of creating a brand new text label and applying all the same properties one thing that we want to change about the text label though is that we actually want to change the text instead of saying rebirth we want it to say upgrades in all capital letters and then we also want to adjust the text stroke transparency as well and we probably want to set this to about a 0.6 maybe so i think that looks pretty good then once again we're going to go inside of the rebirth gui and we're actually going to grab this exit button right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside of the jump shop and paste that directly inside of here now that we have that inside of here we might want to resize it a tiny bit or you can leave it as is if you think that looks fine after that inside of this frame we're going to add a scrolling frame into here and we're going to rename this to container now of course we're going to want to modify the size so for the x scale we're going to try that at about 0.63 and for the y scale we're going to try that at about 0.8 now that we have that let's go ahead and reposition it to about right there and i think that looks pretty good next what we're going to do is for the container we want to set the border size pixel to zero so that we don't have that ugly black line right next to the scroll bar additionally talking about the scroll bar we also want to modify the scroll bar thickness a little bit we probably want to make it a little bit thinner so we could try about eight and i think that looks pretty good for the scroll bar image color we also might want to modify this to be a little bit of a lighter color so something like that and then also for the background transparency we want to set that to one because we don't actually want to see the background at all now that we've removed that white background i'm actually Actually going to change the scroll bar image color once again to be more of just a general white color so something like that inside of this container we actually want to add a ui grid layout to this and we also want to add a text button to this as well now we're going to rename this text button to template and for the ui grid layout we actually want to modify the cell size for the cell size we're going to try 0.3 for the x and 0.115 for the y and that looks pretty nice the reason that we're doing 0.3 on the x is because we want to be able to have three in a single row so now when we have four we can see it makes a whole nother row and it keeps on going so that looks pretty good here's a little tip that I learned when I first started creating GUIs. We can see that we actually have nine buttons visibly displayed to us on our screen, and then we can't really see these buttons down here. Some people might not like seeing these buttons still appear here, but only seeing like a quarter of them. The thing is though, is that it's actually nice to have this small amount of button displayed right here, because that actually indicates to players that there's something here for them to scroll down to. If we modify the sizing so that there were only these nine buttons perfectly shown in this GUI, then it would be less clear to players that they would actually have to scroll down to see more things so that's why we're showing a tiny bit of buns just so that players know hey we should actually scroll right here now i'm not saying that's what everybody should do that's just a little thing that i heard while learning and i think it's some nice knowledge to pass on to other people and you can do what you want with it anyways now that we have all those templates we're actually going to delete them and just leave one next what we're going to do is start working with this text bun so for the background color we actually want to make this a gray so i think that looks pretty good then for the actual text we don't want there to be any text on this so we're just going to set the blank then we want to add a ui corner inside of this so we're just going to duplicate the ui corner that we already have put that inside of there and then we probably want to modify this a little bit so we'll try like i think point one is actually good for this so we'll leave that as is then what we're going to do is inside of the template we're going to add a brand new image label we're going to rename this image label to icon and we're also going to resize this as well so for the size we're going to set to 0.8 scaled on both the x and the y and then also for the position we want to center this as well so we're going to say 0.5 for the anchor point and then 0.5 for the position on the x and the y scaled just like that then what we want to do is we want to go into view we want to open up our asset manager and then we want to get the two icons that we just added for right now we're just going to use the jump icon so we're going to copy that id and then for the 
this image label. We want to set the image right there. And now we can actually see that that icon appears on our screen. Now back to the image label, we actually want to modify the scale type from stretch to fit. And that'll make the image look a lot better because it's no longer being stretched out. Then what we want to do is we want to set the background transparency of that image label to one. And now we actually want to add a text label to this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate that title text label. And we're going to paste that inside of the template button. Then we want to start modifying the size a little bit. So we do want to make it a little bit bigger. We basically want to make it the entire X. So we're going to say 0.8 on the X scale and then about 0.32 on the Y scale. So that looks pretty good. Then what we need to do is we need to reposition this towards the bottom of the bun. And of course, now that we have it here, you can make it smaller or larger if you want. And then we're also going to modify the text as well. So for the text, we're actually going to say X2 double jumps. And now we can look how that text appears. And that looks pretty nice. Now, one thing that actually surprised me, if you guys are having an issue where the icon is overlapping the text, what you guys are going to do is you're going to want to modify the title Z index to be two. And that'll actually make the text appear over top of the icon image label rather than possibly the icon appearing over top of the title text label. And then we're also going to modify the text stroke transparency. And I'm just going to set this to about a 0.7 instead of being a 0.6 because we want the stroke to be a little bit more transparent. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this icon image label and then we're going to rename it to purchase. And then we're going to go inside of the view tab, click on the asset manager, and then we want to actually get the check mark that we have right here, copy that ID. And then we're going to set the image of the purchase image label to that right there. Now that we can see this image, we can clearly see that it is a check mark. What we actually want to do with this is we want to make it a little bit smaller and we want to place it at the top left of our template. So let's go ahead and modify the size. For the size, we want to do it about 0.25 on the X and then again, 0.25 on the Y. And then for the position, we want to set the anchor points to zero. And then for the X and the Y scale, we're going to set both of them to 0.025, just like that. Now we can see that the check mark is appearing at the top left corner of our template bun. And that looks pretty good. Now we're pretty much done with the template bun. What we're then going to do is play around a little bit with the UI grid layout. So let's go ahead and duplicate the template bun a couple of times. So now we have about 12. Going back to the UI grid layout, we want to adjust the cell padding to make it scale. So for the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.01. And for the Y scale, we're also going to set that to 0.01 as well, just like that. So now we can see there is still spacing in between all of those. What we then also want to do is we want to set the horizontal alignment to center so that these appear more towards the middle of the screen. So what we can do is go ahead and delete all the templates except for one. Then inside of this frame, we're going to add a brand new frame and we're going to rename this to info. We then want to modify the size of this. For the X scale, we're going to set that to 0.285. And for the Y scale, we're going to set that to 0.745, just like that. Now that we've resized it, we have to reposition it as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this over to here. And we basically want it to be lined up with the container. So I think that looks pretty good. And now if we wanted to, we could make this a little bit taller as well. So even if we wanted to drag it down to right there, I think that looks pretty good. Then what we're going to do is also throw a UI corner inside of this. So we're going to duplicate that already existing UI corner. And we're going to maybe set this to like 0.05. Then we're going to go ahead and select the frame and we want to change the background color. And we actually want to change the background color to a little bit more of a darker purple. So that looks pretty good. Inside of here, we also want to add the title text label. So we're going to duplicate that and paste it right into here. Then inside of the info frame, we want to add another frame to this. We're then going to rename this frame to icon background just like that. And then we also want to resize this as well. For the size of this, we're going to set it to 0.9 on the X and 0.28 on the Y. Then for the position, we actually want to center this on the X. So for the anchor point, we're going to say 0.5. And for the position, we're going to say 0.5 as well. So now that's centered on the X. And then we just want to bring it down a tiny bit from the top. So I think that might even be good enough. For the background color of the icon background frame, we actually want to set that to an even darker purple. So I think that looks pretty good. With that being said, we also might want to drag it down just a tiny bit. So maybe even right there might be fine. Then we want to throw a UI corner inside of this. So we're going to duplicate the one from the info frame. And I think we're going to increase that to maybe 0 0.075. So I think that looks good. Then inside of the icon background, we want to actually add an image label to this. And we're going to rename that to icon. Then once again, I'm going to go inside of my asset manager and I'm just going to grab the jump icon right here. And then for this image, I'm going to set it to that icon right there. I'm also going to change the scale type from stretch to fit. And then I'm also going to change the size as well. So for the size, I'm going to try it at about 0 0.8, 0, 0, 0.8, 0. And then I'm also going to center this. So 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0.5, 0. For the the background transparency, we're going to set that to one. And there we go. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to actually duplicate this title text label, and we're going to put that inside of the info frame. Now with this text label, we actually want this text label to be just below the icon background, and we're going to stretch it out a little bit. So I think that looks pretty nice. We also probably want to make this just a little bit smaller. So we'll try that for right now. If you guys want the actual sizing, it's right there. And for the positioning, it's right there as well. Then we're going to modify the text. So for the text, we actually want to say X3 
double jumps. And for the text stroke transparency, we're going to set that to one because we don't actually want there to be any text stroke. Then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this icon background and rename it from icon background to jumps background. Now, what we actually want to do with this is for right now, we're just going to set the icon to not be visible. Then we can actually grab the background and we're going to drag it down a little bit. Now, where we actually want this to be is a little bit below the title text label. And then we also want to make it relatively small. So I think that might be decent. Then going back to the icon, let's go ahead and set that to visible. But we also got to resize this as well. And where we want this is basically to be on the left side of the frame. So we're going to drag it over to there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now that we've adjusted that icon, we also want to modify the UI corner inside of here. And we probably want to set that to about a 0.1, maybe even a little bit more, maybe like a 0.2 so that this box is a little bit more rounded. Then once again, we're going to duplicate this title text label and we're going to put that inside of the jumps background. And we definitely need to resize this. So how we want this to be set up is we basically want it to appear just a little bit off of the actual icon. And we want it to be almost the entire height of the background. So for the size, we're going to set the X to 0.4. And for the Y, it's going to be 0.8. Then for the position, at least on the Y, we want to make sure that this is centered. So we're going to set the anchor point to 0.5 and then the position to 0.5 as well on the Y scale. Then we just want the text to say times three for right now. So we're going to set it to that. And we also want to adjust the text X alignment to be left instead of center so that it appears close to the icon. And then we also want to rename the title text label from title to amount. Then we're going to duplicate this title text label and we actually want to drag it down a little bit. What we then want to do is rename this to cost. And for the text, we actually want to set it to cost semicolon just like that. And we also want to make this relatively small. Well, actually really small. So I think that is pretty good. And I think that's positioned pretty good as well. So this is the actual size right here. And then that's the position as well. Next, what we're going to do is duplicate the jumps background frame, drag that right below our cost label. And I think we want to get it just a tiny bit closer. So maybe even like that. I think that actually is pretty good. Then we're going to rename this frame from jumps background to cost background. For the amount text label, let's just go ahead and set the text to be 100 M. And now you might want to stretch this out a little bit more on the X, or you could just leave it as is. I think it even looks fine as is, but we also need to change the icon as well. So once again, we're going to go inside of our asset manager and we're going to grab our clicks currency icon right here. So then let's go ahead and set the image of that icon just like that. Now, based on that icon, we actually might want to reposition this a tiny bit. So we actually might want to position this maybe like 0.12 so that it moves over just a tiny bit. And we should probably readjust the amount text label as well, but I think we're just going to leave it as is because it's really not that bad. It doesn't even look like they're overlapping at all. Then what we finally want to do is add a text button to this. We're going to rename this to buy. For the background color, of course, we want to make this just a little bit of a green color. So there we go. For the text, we actually don't want to have any text on this. We also want to add a UI corner to this. We'll make this a little bit bigger. So like 0.1. And then we also need to resize this as well. So let's go ahead and set this to scaled. There we go. Let's drag this down a little bit and we want to position it towards the bottom of the info frame. So then let's resize it again, make it a little bit bigger. And I think that looks pretty good, but let's actually go ahead and just adjust this a little bit more. So even 0.12 on the Y, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and check the size of the cost background because that's the same as the jump background. And that's set to 0.9. So we're actually going to set the size on the X scale to be 0.9, just like that. Then we want to make sure that we center this button. So for the anchor point on the X, we're going to set that to 0.5 and the X scaled in the position 0.5 as well, just like that. Then what we want to do is duplicate this title text label, throw that inside of the buy button. We're going to resize this a little bit. So we're going to set that to 0.9.9 for the position. We're going to make sure that we center this. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5. There we go. And then we want to set the text of this to buy now. And then we also want to have a little bit of stroke on this text. So we're going to set that to about probably 0.6. I think that looks good. We also might want to adjust the UI corner a little bit more on this button. So maybe like 0.2. And now actually, I think that looks pretty good. So now we're pretty much done with this UI. One of the last things that I really want to do is just move this up a tiny bit. So I think that actually looks perfect now. As always, we should definitely click on test, click on a device and see how this looks on other devices. And it might look a little bit ugly on smaller devices, but it still does look exactly as it should. So that means that we scaled everything, we positioned everything correctly and everything else like that. So that's all that we're really worried about. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that all being said, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you guys did enjoy, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on so you get notified whenever I upload a brand new video. Of course, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. So there's a link down below in the description and you guys go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.